Hi, I'm Michael Burt from the Eastman School of Music, and I'm happy to be a part of this year's SCORE Magazine educational series. Uh, today we're going to talk about hand cymbals, which is something that, um, for all percussions, is a very, very important instrument to master. Um, certainly, it, it's an instrument that probably most of us, especially as students, uh, don't practice enough. Uh, we spend a lot of time, I know my students do, and I know I did when I was a student, spend you know, a lot of time practicing snare drum, practicing xylophone, practicing marimba, practicing maybe timpani as well. Um, and we sort of forget about you know, the cymbals, the tambourine, the triangle, excerpts, and, and that, that kind of playing. But I think you know, those of us who have played in orchestras, I think, would, I think we could honestly say that probably the most fun is maybe to play cymbals in the orchestra, in my opinion. Um, and once you master the cymbals, I think it's a very rewarding instrument to play. Um, some great sounds and, and, and a really a large volume of expression is available to you with these instruments. It's fantastic. So, in approaching cymbals, um, for me, like I do with most of the instruments in the percussion family, or maybe I should say even all of the instruments, I try to bring a commonality to what goes on between the instruments. So when we're going from snare drum to marimba, it's not like we're reinventing the wheel. There's a lot of things that are very similar in your approach to those instruments. Okay, same thing with timpani. So the same thing is true when you get to cymbals. Um, you know, when, you, when, you're, when you're playing any instrument, what you're really trying to do is leverage the weight, maybe if it's with snare drum or marimba, you're leveraging the weight of the implement, whether it be a stick or a mallet. If it's a tam-tam, it's a big mallet. You're going to leverage the weight of that mallet into the tam-tam to create the sound you want. Um, of course, you know, that, you know that depending on the velocity of the stroke, that will change the volume. Same thing's true with cymbals, okay? So with cymbals, you know, what we're trying to do is leverage the weight of these two pieces of metal so they can come together in a very natural, I want to say maybe uninhibited way to create the most beautiful sound possible. All right? If we're forcing those two things together and not comfortable with leveraging that weight, that's when the sounds suffer and that's I think also when we suffer too physically. It makes, we're, we're, we're more tired and it's, it's more awkward for us. So, so let's start by talking a little bit about how we hold the cymbals and how we get the cymbals in our hand. Um, and for me, it really starts with thinking of the cymbal strap like a snare drum stick or a mallet okay, shaft. So if you take a snare drum stick, um, when I teach uh, snare drum and go over this with my students, we talk first about the fulcrum. Where is the balance of the stick in your hand? You know? So for me, it's you know, your index finger and your thumb are perpendicular. There's your balance and your middle finger comes around and your fulcrum is really these three fingers. On the snare drum stick, it looks like that. And I get my stroke. I'm using my wrist and it comes down, pivots nicely like so. Same thing's true in the cymbal strap. Let's pretend it's a snare drum stick. Same fulcrum for me, okay? Index finger, thumb perpendicular, middle finger comes around. Most of the weight is being held in the front. And of course, I'm going to grip the back of the strap more than I would a snare drum stick because there's a lot more weight to deal with. And that cymbal sits at an angle in my hand, so I have to kind of leverage that through the entire strap, okay? Um, I'm going to leave maybe a little space here, so if I want to open the cymbal up a little bit and not have to always be inhibiting the resonance of the sound, I'm going to have a little space here to allow that to happen. But primarily, I'm going to kind of rest the cymbal on my knuckle so I can control the angle and keep that fulcrum in place. Okay. Now, I do that because I want to use some wrist in my cymbal stroke, in my, in my approach physically to moving the cymbal. You know, I don't want to just use my arm. If this balance in my fulcrum is out of balance or out of, uh, you know, out of place, I should say, um, that tightens up my hand, it tightens up my arm, and it really changes the way my arm moves, the trajectory or the natural flow of movement here. So if you take your snare drum stick and you're playing like this, that's great. You start doing that, you can tell right away that things tighten up and it changes dramatically the way it feels as you move. And actually that spreads all the way up here. Okay? So, so the center of it's in the front. Same thing here. When I'm moving the cymbal, I want to be able to drop the cymbal like so, using a lot of wrist actually. I think a good analogy for the cymbal movement in relation to snare drum might be sort of a molar stroke where you're going to drop your cymbal and also use a little bit of arm like so. Not like one unit, like a two by four, but like a unit sort of that moves with hinges like so. Okay. Same thing with the cymbal. Now this surface has got a rubber texture to it so the sound is kind of muddled and it doesn't, doesn't work so well. If you were to do that off the floor, you can actually get a pretty decent cymbal crash off the floor. And what's great about that is you're kind of learning to, to drop or sort of getting comfortable with dropping the weight of the cymbal off the floor. Um, and I think that's a great way to even start. You can do both hands together, drop those cymbals off the floor, use your wrists, and get the cymbals to kind of to get kind of a good crash off the floor, and then you can start working on even uh, crashing the cymbals together. Uh, I think that works quite well. Now, more specifically about the crash, um, 
I'm right-handed, so the, for me what I do is I start by simplifying the crash technique and have what I have is my right hand will move and my left hand will, be, will remain more or less stationary at first. So I'm developing sort of a nice, simple, economic movement uh, for developing my, what I would call the flam technique. And the flam technique is something you use in cymbal crashes um, to get that ideal crash sound, meaning I'm going to drop one part of the cymbal into the other part of the cymbal earlier, just slightly creating that little flam, that little grace note. <laughs> Do that because if we don't, we get you know that sort of va that vacuum sound that is undesirable. That <laughs> now you're going to see a lot of different uh, approaches to that as well. I approach it where you know my, my right hand symbol is attacking the left hand symbol over the top of the symbol like so. <laughs> so my left hand then is going to remain essentially at maybe like a 45 degree angle. Okay, and my right hand will be at a slightly you know a lesser angle, maybe a, uh, you know, a 30 degree angle or so. And like I said, over the top, I can see the relationship of the symbols to my left here, maybe at like around 8 or 9 o'clock, uh, to my perspective on the symbols. And my crash is happening somewhere around 11 o'clock. <laughs> what I'm doing is essentially is just dropping first my right hand into my left hand. <laughs> A great way to practice this is to start uh, by maybe bringing the symbols together. <laughs> Just even to get a sense of how that feels to have those symbols together, gain some strength, and then start just sort of putting them together like this. And then slightly relax the tension. <laughs> until you find that crash you want, and, that, and that, uh, that angle and the relationship between the two symbols. It's also important to know that, you know, there's a bunch of symbols in this room, and, and every pair of symbols is very, very different. So as you go from one set to the other, that angle, you know, the relationship between the symbols in terms of how far they are, you know, in terms of their, uh, their relationship to each other this way or this way, is going to be different for each set of symbols that you crash, and that's just something that takes some getting used to. There, you know, I think it's ideal for everyone to have their own set of symbols. It's like anything else, you, know, you, have, you, know, you have some mallets that you like to use. You may, you may have like 10 sets of mallets in your bag for your marimba playing, and I'll bet there's one set you use the most. Okay? And the same thing's true with cymbals. You know, I'm going to have one set that's my go-to set that I use most of the time that I know I feel comfortable with. They, they just feel great. I know I can get a good crash right away. But you also need to experiment with and get used to crashing a lot of different cymbals because you step into an ensemble and you might have to make a change and you got to walk over and play a bigger set of cymbals or a set of cymbals that's a little heavier or thicker. That's going to feel different. You got to get accustomed to making quick adjustments with those cymbals. So that's another sort of part of practicing cymbals that's important to, I think, incorporate into what you're doing. A really important part of learning to crash the cymbals, well, I think, is understanding how your body works with the crash, okay? A lot of people you'll see crash and they'll stand with their legs kind of just, you know, in this what I would call maybe a parade rest, you know, uh, almost like you're getting ready to play tennis situation like this. And you're crashing here and it really ends up using a lot of your back and I think it's quite uncomfortable. So for, for me, I like to take my left foot and put it forward because my, my left my left symbol is that stationary symbol. Now that may be different for left-handed people, it could be reversed. Um, but I, I keep this forward kind of supporting that. And then also my symbols are kind of lower on my body. I'm not going to hold them up so high. I have to use a lot of my pectoral muscles to, to hold them up here, um, which may be a good workout, but not great when I'm doing a lot of crashing or practicing cymbal crashes. And I feel I can get a better crash down here, because then I leverage the crash this way, instead of if I'm doing it here, I'm having to leverage the crash almost up near my, you know, near my, near my head, my face. Instead of down here, oh, it's in the center of my body, and that crash feels much more comfortable to me. I can kind of relax. <laughs> And then I feel like I have my whole body working congruently together to make this crash happen. And that feels much more comfortable. And then I feel like it's much easier, as I said earlier, to leverage that weight of the cymbal. Okay, now I'm using a bigger set of 20-inch uh, classic orchestral series cymbals. They're a little heavier, great for bigger crashes. i got to get a, a lot of leverage on that weight. I want to make sure I get that weight moving in a comfortable way. So moving them together kind of helps... I think create a better sound, both cymbals are moving, and uh, I think the sound becomes warmer and uh, much more beautiful.